Hello, and welcome to our Thursday Reflection. I'm going to read from the Gospel according to St Matthew, chapter 26, and beginning to read at the 47th verse. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd, armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. And the men stepped forward, seized Jesus and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached out for his sword, drew it and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would scripture be fulfilled, but say it must happen in this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writing of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. And as always, we thank God for his word. Does it ever occur to you that Jesus's disciples get what we would call these days a bad press? I mean, we're inclined to ask, why didn't they realise who he was? After all, he told them often enough. Why didn't they understand what he was teaching them? It's quite clear. And of course, why do they ask such stupid questions? But of course, it's easy for us to criticise when we know what's going to happen next, when we have the evidence of the resurrection. And in today's reading, we might criticise them for running away. But why should we blame them? Think about it. They do not immediately run for it. They're prepared to stay and fight. We hear that one of Jesus's companions reached for his sword, drew it and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. In St John's Gospel, we hear that the person concerned was Peter. Not surprising. But Jesus himself tells them not to fight. He tells them that he could summon 12 legions of angels if he wanted them. And only then do they run. What if they hadn't? What if they'd stayed? They might well have been arrested. The one who had attacked the high priest's servant, Peter or whoever, would certainly have been imprisoned and probably the key thrown away. They would have all been taken away, kept apart from one another, and would no doubt have lost heart. And all that precious teaching given specifically to the disciples by Jesus could have been lost. Forgive me if I seem to go off at a tangent here, but have you ever seen the musical Camelot? At the end, King Arthur is preparing for his last battle. He knows that the forces of evil will triumph and that he himself will be killed. On the eve of the battle, a boy comes to him, scarcely more than a child, determined to fight and die with his king. But Arthur says, no, no, you have a more important job to do. You must go, you must go and tell everyone that once there was a spot that was known as Camelot, 
and tell them the stories of the Knights of the Round Table. That's your job, not to fight, but to tell. And from memory, the last words spoken in that musical are, run boy, run. Of course, that's all fiction, but it has something very important to say. For whilst I'm quite ready to admit that the disciples didn't know what they were doing and probably did flee in terror, the outcome is the same. The outcome is what is required by the king of kings. Because they fled together, they were able to keep together. Because they kept together, they were able to talk about Jesus, to start trying to work it all out, and together to talk to and listen to Jesus after the resurrection. And together, there on the Mount of the Ascension, they were commissioned by their Lord, their King, to go and make disciples of all nations. Sometimes God calls us to come. And sometimes he tells us to go. Sometimes he invites us to run to him. And sometimes he asks us to run to others in his name. Amen. So let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we want to follow you, to walk where you would lead and travel the road of faithful discipleship. Give us discernment to know which road to take and run with perseverance the race that is set before us for your name's sake. Amen. Goodbye and God bless. Keep safe in the days to come.